I think we all have a bucket list of dream locations we'd love to visit, explore and capture. Number three on my bucket list is this beautiful country. Known for its stunning, picturesque scenery, there are endless sweeping vistas of rugged mountains and fjords, magnificent glaciers, rolling hills and pristine alpine lakes. There's no shortage of epic landscapes here, that's for sure. So in about two weeks time, I'll be in New Zealand for a friend's wedding and I'm super excited for her. Bless her, she's had to postpone it twice before due to the pandemic. So fingers crossed, third time lucky, it is going to be amazing. Now, it will be my first time in New Zealand and I am just wrapped about the opportunity to uh, realise one of my landscape photography dreams. Uh, so I'll be there for about 10 days doing a lot of landscape photography as well as uh, filming some videos while I'm there. Uh, so I won't tell you as yet exactly where I'll be. I'll keep that as a surprise for future videos. So uh, watch this space. Um, but what I will tell you though is the gear that I'll be taking with me now. I've had a lot of questions about the type of gear that I use so I thought this video would be a great opportunity to share with you some of the things that I'll be taking with me on this uh, trip. But before I do that I do need to get my fitness up and uh, some mileage in my legs for some of the challenging hikes that I'll be doing through New Zealand. So I better finish this walk. Uh, and I might grab some B-roll along the way as well, but I'll see you very shortly. Well, I'm back from my hike. I really needed that. Now this could easily become a really long video. So what I'll do is just to cover only the essential items that I'll be carrying with me and I'll break it down between my photography gear, my video gear and my hiking gear. Full disclaimer here, all my items I purchased with my own money. So this is certainly not a sponsored video at all. Uh, but if you're interested in finding out more details about some of the items that I've got, uh, I'll leave uh, links to uh, to these items in the description below and you can check them out further there. And if you're interested in buying uh, any of these items through the links, they are affiliate links. So I do get a small commission, uh, no extra cost to you, but it does help me uh, and this channel out a little bit. Now, as I mentioned, I will be doing quite a few grilling hikes to get the epic landscape photos that I'm hoping to get. Uh, so what that means is that I'm really interested in keeping my gear as light as possible. Uh, so if I can keep everything in my bag to 10 kilograms and under, I'd be a happy gal. So what I'll do is I'll just leave a, a counter in the bottom left hand corner there and we'll try and tr keep track of the weight as we go and we'll see how close we can get to uh, 10 kilos. A uh, good place to start is with my bag. So this is my Shimoda Action X 50. I've had this bag from pretty much day dot. It has been with me on all my photography journeys so far. It is a 50 litre bag and I love its quality, its versatility and its size. So I've taken it on a few hiking and camping trips with me. Now, as with most camera bags, um, it does open from the back. Uh, and you can see here, I've got my core unit. So this is a medium sized core unit, which is DSLR size. So it's got a bit of depth to it. And as you can see, we've got um, various partitionings here with bits of Velcro. And so it just allows me to uh, configure my compartment for storage and put in all my camera gear as I need. Uh, it's got a lot of padding, uh, a lot of straps, adjustable straps here depending on your size. So you can see it goes from small to extra large um, based on your torso length. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's just been fantastic and it is, you know, really good uh, weather resistant, durable material as well. Main issue for me that I've noticed uh, over 
a few multi-day hikes that I've done is this back padding is quite thick and it sits flush against my back. Now an issue with that is when I hike I tend to sweat quite a bit and because it sits flush on my back uh, there's not a lot of circulation uh, and so the sweat just accumulates here. This part gets really wet and then my back gets really wet. So Shimoda, if, if you're listening, uh, really well thought through design, uh, but one thing I wish could be improved is just the way that the, the back um, rests, the back padding rests against your back. Now, I'll show you what I mean um, and how that contrasts say to, you know, a, a really well designed hiking bag. So this is my husband's Osprey 65 litre hiking bag. And you can see back here, it's got this um, suspension bridge, which just lifts the bag off your back. And it's quite aerated behind here. And so on long hikes, it's actually quite comfortable. Uh, and because it's not flush against your back, it gives a chance for, for your back, your, your sweat to evaporate and it's not soaking against your back. So I think eventually uh, I will be moving over to a hiking bag like this. Onto my stills camera and I am so excited to be introducing you all to my Fujifilm X-H2. I have been waiting for this baby to arrive for a very long time. I think as early as last year when its release was just being rumored. So I've only had this now in my hands for the last couple of days. I haven't really had a chance to put it through its paces as yet. No doubt I'll be doing that in New Zealand. So I can't give you my thoughts on, you know, how it performs at this stage, but I don't think it will let me down. The reason why I picked this up is because uh, I needed uh, a secondary uh, camera for my videos. Now, if you've been following my channel today, you might know that I film pretty much all my videos on my uh, GoPro Hero 9, which I'm filming with right now. And it has been fantastic for me. I love the small form factor, the fact that it's so lightweight uh, and it's just really convenient to, to take out and about with uh, very little fuss. But the quality of the footage is not the cinematic quality that I'm looking for. Um, and going forward, I'm hoping to create a lot of, uh, well, create more uh, cinematic footage in, in my videos. So that's the reason why I've decided to make the X-H2 my main stills camera and my X-T4 will now be my video camera. And I'll speak a little bit more about that later on. So in terms of the uh, lenses that I'll be taking with me on most of my uh, on most of my photography hikes. My trusted 10 to 24 wide angle, this has just been pretty much my primary landscape photography lens. I think I use it about at least 90% of the time. Now in terms of mid-range zoom, uh, I've recently picked up this Tamron 35 to 150 mil f2.8 to f4. Similar to my X-H2, I've only had this in my hands for a few days, so I haven't had a chance to fully test it out, but I've read a lot of reviews about it and it is pretty sharp, so very good optics for its price range. Um, and the reason why I got this, some of you might know that I recently damaged my 70 to 300 Fuji lens. And so this is meant to be a partial replacement for that. And I say partial because it doesn't match the focal length of that Fuji lens. Um, but I found that rarely to date anyway with my landscape photography, I've rarely needed to um, go beyond 150 mil. So I'm hoping that uh, when I'm out there, particularly as uh, there's gonna be a lot of mountain ranges, um, there'll be times when I do want to get a compressed scene. Um, perhaps there's not much interesting happening in my foreground or midground. And so having this um, telephoto reach will um, help me just to compress the scene. And sometimes it just creates for a bit of, uh, you know, better atmosphere and just different perspective in my images. And what I'll be using in order to get uh, the Tamron onto my Fuji camera is um, this uh, adapter. So Fringer EFX Pro 2. 
and this is the EF to FX mount. So it allows me to use Tamron lenses, Sigma, and also Canon and a few other brands to make it compatible with my Fujifilm camera there. Now I'll also have a few other lenses with me, uh, but I think these, fair to say, shouldn't be included in my weight count because uh, I won't have them with me on all of my uh, day hikes. They are very specific for uh, specific purposes. So for example, this um, 18 mil f1.4 Fujifilm lens that I have. This is just purely for astrophotography. With a 1.4 fixed aperture, it is quite a bright and fast lens, which is um, great for astrophotography. I will be doing some astro in New Zealand. It'll be some great locations, I hope, that I have in mind. And uh, this will be with me um, at that time. I also have a, well, I don't have it as yet. Uh, it's on its way and I'm really hoping I'll get it in time for the trip. Uh, a new super telephoto zoom lens and that's my Tamron 150 to 500. Hope to do a bit of wildlife and some bird photography over there. Can't wait to, to give that lens a shot. Just a couple of more things to round out my photography gear. And uh, this is my uh, carbon fiber Serai uh, ST124 tripod. Now the tripod and the ball head together are only about 1.6 kilos so relatively lightweight for its size and how sturdy it is. So great carbon fiber tripod there that um, I'll be taking with me and of course because I'll be doing a lot of long exposures and I think a lot um, I'll be taking my Case Wolverine uh, magnetic circular filters with me and I I have had these filters uh, from day one and uh, I just love the convenience of being able to snap my filters on uh, because they're magnetic without fiddling around and it means that when I'm out in the field it's quite efficient and very quick and I've noticed no issues with them to date so you know no color casting, vignetting, light leaks, things like that and what I have in my kit uh, so I've got my circular polarizer, my six stop, my ten stop Stop and my 15 stop. Now my 15 stop isn't case, it's, it's actually Missy. I expect to be doing uh, a bit of daytime long exposures because there'll be occasions where I just cannot be uh, at a mountain range or by a lake in time uh, at sunrise or sunset. Um, a lot of these locations will involve a bit of hiking and a bit of driving so chances are I'll get there sometime during the day. My video camera, as I mentioned, will be my X-T4. This camera needs no introduction. You've seen it on all my videos to date. A great hybrid camera. Now, mounted onto my X-T4 is my 18 to 55 mil kit lens. And I think this lens is gonna be great for videography. Very basic, but it's got a good focal length. I will also uh, be taking along my GoPro Hero 9 as I mentioned is what I'm filming on at the moment. It is just such a, a versatile uh, camera. And the GoPro will be on my uh, Serre T004SK tripod. So this is an aluminium travel tripod, extremely lightweight. It's only about uh, 1.1 kilos in total. So this is quite compact and lightweight, which is what I'm all for. I we'll also have my Rode Wireless Go 2. You'll see that I've currently got one clipped on me on my shirt and I've got a spare transmitter here and then also a receiver. These things are just so lightweight. Of course, uh, my videography isn't complete without some aerial footage. This is my DJI Air 2S. This will be my little pal up in the air um, taking a lot of aerial footage and maybe some photos as well. I need to explore drone photography a little bit further. First up are my trekking poles. So these are my Black Diamond Alpine Carbon trekking poles. Um, 
fantastic for when I am particularly doing uh, grueling uphill climbs. And these being carbon fiber, really lightweight, I think it's only about 485 grams thereabouts for the pair. And of course, also very sturdy. And with the cork handles, it helps with the poles being lightweight and I think just more durable over the long run. So it'll be mid spring in New Zealand, but I'm expecting it to still be quite chilly, particularly up in the Alps or in the mountains. Uh, so it's gonna be really important for me to make sure that I've got uh, very warm layers on. Um, and I will definitely be having these gloves on me. So these are my photography gloves, my Valere Markov Pro 3. They've got a 100% merino uh, inner lining and I think a Gore-Tex outer lining, which is meant to keep it waterproof. What I really like about these gloves is that they've got the thumb and index finger exposed. So I can easily just uh, pop out my thumb, my index finger and swipe my LCD screen or press that shutter release button um, without any hassles which is great. Um, what I haven't found to be so good with these gloves is um, the fact that because they've got that access, um, so there's a magnet that sort of just pinches back and it clips back and it stays there, means that I have uh, had snow and a little bit of water go through the gaps from time to time and that's made my uh, fingers on the inside a little bit wet and I found that the tips of my fingers uh, still tend to get quite cold as well. So. Um, they can be warmer. I mean, this is a midwinter rating, whatever that means. Um, it's probably not the warmest rating. You can't take it to Antarctica, that's for sure. But um, I guess sufficiently warm for most people. So I'll be having uh, merino underlayers and down jackets and things like that on as well. So I won't go through all that gear, but um, certainly uh, a lot of layers to make sure that I stay warm and dry. My trusty hokers, as you may have seen, I won't put them on the table, they are a little bit dirty. They are Gore-Tex Upper Vibram Soles. It's really important to make sure that the soles have a lot of grip um, and these shoes I really like because they are really lightweight, they're really comfortable. So these will definitely be with me. Last but not least, uh, safety is is always uh, a very important consideration so I've got this Garmin uh, inReach mini which is a satellite phone so you can send and receive text messages really handy just in case there are emergencies you want to be contactable and I want people to know where I am and I'm not caught out uh, so always have that when I'm out on a long hike. So I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed having a sneak peek of what's in my bag and seeing what I use when I'm out there not only taking landscape photos but also in terms of my video gear. So the next time you see me I will be out there somewhere in beautiful New Zealand uh, with this in my hands and snapping away. I am so excited. Uh, so I hope you get out there and uh, take some photos yourself. Enjoy your photography as always. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I will see you very soon. See you later.